While Pastor Shelley and I were on vacation, I, I heard a commotion, and I looked up, and I am wondering, am I on? Do you hear me? So uh, we'll see here, but I might need to just go back to this mic. Go to three. Try that again. The front heard me say what happened on vacation, but I'm going to just pull the rest of you in on it. We were on vacation, we were in a bookstore, and I heard a commotion. I looked up. There was a kid, maybe six years old, just running around. Really? You know this is going to be a good message. Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is going to be stellar. I can feel it. I love it. And there's this kid, maybe five or six years old, running back and forth in this bookstore. So we, the, the, part of the commotion was the kid touching everything, picking up everything. Part of the commotion was the harried mom. And she, she had a baby in her arms. She was choosing books off the shelf. She was buying stuff. And the kid was just running zoom, zoom, back and forth, back and forth. And like, I had to go like this a couple times as he just like, swooshed by me. And I, I was just going, oh, my goodness, what is going to happen? And this, this is what the mom kept doing. Johnny, stop. Stop. Quit, quit that right now. I super totally mean it. Stop. Stop. And, and guess what? Johnny just kept doing it. And you know what I was thinking? I, in, my, in my head, I was just talking to her. I, I didn't want to say it out loud, but I, I just wanted to say to her so desperately, lady, do you, do you even know you're going to end up in my sermon on parenting? No. You don't know. And here she is in my sermon. We're in a little mini service, little mini series uh, from the book of Proverbs, Relationships from the book of Proverbs, according to Proverbs. And the last couple of weeks while we've been gone, we've been away, we have had some great messages on Sunday mornings. My goodness, Pastor Christian brought the message about marriage. And I just thought it was so inspiring. Like he really held up just a beautiful jewel of, of, how, of how marriage is and what it can be. If, if both uh, both partners just act the way God said to act. I, I just thought that was so good. It was helpful to me personally. I thought it was just what we needed. Last week, Pastor Tori, oh my goodness, I don't know if you had the Kleenexes out uh, during her, her uh, message about friendship as she talked about losing a friend. Uh, that's her age. Wow, and just the important, importance of friendships. The Bible has so much to say about relationships. God really cares about relationships. And so today I want to talk to you about wise parenting from Proverbs. So Proverbs 22, verse 6. Chapter 22, verse 6. And if you've got a, a smartphone or, or you've got your Bible with you, why don't you take it out and get it in your hands. That way you can see, uh, see it for yourself, read it, go back and forth. Okay, so now some of you just started to, to tune out. Online, you're reaching for the dial. Okay, I'm going to just watch a funny cat video instead. No, no, listen. This, this message is for you. If you have kids in your home, certainly this message is for you uh, because you're in the thick of it right now. Uh, but this message is also for you if you are on our kids team. If you're on our, we have the best kids ministry team anywhere. Kids love to go to church. And it, so if you're on kids team, man, you, you got to listen up to this. But this message is also for you if you know a kid. Raise your hands if you know a kid. <laughs> Excellent. All right, this message is also for you, for you if you are a kid. This message is for you if you will ever have kids, if you will ever babysit kids. This message is for you. There's something here in this message for you. Grandparents, foster parents, adoptive parents, everybody, there's a message for you today. So I want, I want you to listen up, even from the very beginning. And I believe that the good news that we're going to look at today is that God has given us, in the book of Proverbs, a wise plan for raising great kids. How many of you think it's good to have a wise plan for raising great kids? I do too, and God thinks it's important too. So it's very cool that if you will learn from your heavenly Father's example, 
then it will prevent a lot of frustrations for you, for the parents, and it will also produce godly, productive, parent-honoring kids. If you just listen and apply God's wise plan for raising great kids. So are you in? You with me? You're going to go? Let's do it. So some of you, you know, you're empty nesters and you're, you're getting ready for grandkids in the future. Some of you just interact with neighbor kids. Some of you interact with kids in other areas. I think there's something for everybody today. So the problem is that there are so many conflicting voices screaming at you their opinions and their strategies for raising kids. So like you go to the grocery store and you think, man, if I discipline my kid that's acting up in the grocery store, what if someone sees it and calls CPS and are going to take my kids away? When, when, I was, when I was young, when I was a kid, no one was even thinking about that. And today, I suspect everyone is thinking about it. It's at least in the back of your mind. Oh, wow, what, man, what if, I, what if I discipline my kids and I get in trouble for it? Or conversely, you're in the grocery store and you think, well, if I don't discipline my kid... Oh my goodness, do you remember we were at, I was at Home Depot uh, this week, I, or I, some store, we we're at some store that has grocery carts. The little two-year-old child is standing on the seat, mother is not nearby, and little sister is in the cart and they're fighting with each other. And I'm just like, I just want to reach out and before she falls and hits that little head on the concrete, I just want to grab her and help her. And then, but no worries. She climbed off that and just stood on the eggs in the cart. So it was no problem. <laughs> she was totally safe. Strawberries were squished. It was no problem. But so there, yeah, as a parent, you're thinking, but if I don't discipline my child, then I'm going to have just all these staring eyes judging me, looking at me, thinking I'm a terrible parent. And to the point, you just want to take your kid and just put it in someone else's basket and walk away. I mean, <laughs> if they're be misbehaving, I don't know that child. We, we, we taught our kids about stranger danger, and one of the things they're supposed to say is, this is not my parent, if someone's taking you. Well, some parents want to say, that is not my child. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I've never met him. Don't know. And another thing that we just wonder about, like, who is supposed to call the shots in your family? Is little Johnny supposed to call the shots, lead the show? Well, I know that might kind of sound silly, but that actually is the prevailing thought. Little Johnny knows best, not mom and dad. And it's spilling over into a lot of very serious and long-range impacting areas in our lives. That, oh, little Johnny, uh, little Susie, they, they know what's best. Uh, we, we moved a few years ago, but uh, our neighbor in our previous location across the street, I was having a talk with him one day, and he, he had a little three-year-old. And he said, you know, we were going to put him in preschool, but we just decided he really knows what's best for his education. And so we're, we're just going to let him choose his schedule each day, all day. What do you want to do, little Johnny? And he was serious, not kidding, because he had gotten this notion that goes around, the kid knows what's best for him. And to that I politely say, hogwash. <laughs> that makes no sense at all. The kid knows nothing. That is ridiculous. So what is a parent or a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle or a teacher supposed to do? We've got all these conflicting advice coming around. Well, fortunately, we can see in the book of Proverbs God's wise plan. And this is one thing that we know. From, from, if you read all of Proverbs, all the verses about parenting, you'll, you'll see this really quickly. Wise parenting takes a lot of discipline. Wise parenting takes discipline. Not only just disciplining the kid or the kids, but self-discipline as well. Parenting takes a lot of discipline, and that is a general principle. So today I wanted to, to bring to you three truths about discipline regarding parenting and taking care of kids, raising godly kids from the book of Proverbs. So the first one is discipline is training. The second one is discipline is loving. And the third one I'm not going to tell you yet. It depends on if I have time. But I've got some bonus material that I, it's of a type that I don't usually bring at the end of this message. So please stay tuned. All right. So discipline is training. 
Discipline is training. What do, what do I mean by that? I, I, I'm starting to de define it. Well, I'm going to go to what is possibly the most misunderstood verse in the Bible. And that is Proverbs 22.6. I think that it is a strong contender. If it's not the most misunderstood, it's right up there. Proverbs 22.6. You could probably quote it uh, in some translation of the Bible. Direct your children onto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. Uh, you might have memorized it like I did. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's that, that same verse. Direct your children onto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. So parents, we take this as a promise that it, we have, we, this verse, we say, this is a guarantee. There's no, no other outcome other than this guarantee that our child, if I make sure to pray with them every night before bed and I take them to church, they will follow Jesus for the rest of their lives. And we, we put a lot of extra meaning on that verse that is not there. So we're going we're gonna to dive a little bit deeper into this verse. And I, if, if you apply it the way I just said, does that mean that parents are to blame if a child does not follow Jesus, if a child does not become Christian? That's the way we take that verse. It's all the parents' fault, is it? Is that even, does the book of Proverbs support that? Does the, does the whole Bible support that? We're, we're going to look at it. So to, to, to get started, I, 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 I believe, uh, just after my study, my reading and everything, that this verse is intended as a warning, not a promise. It is absolutely true. The verse is absolutely true, but it is more of a warning than a promise. So, so we're going to start by looking at two key words from this verse. Direct, that, direct your children onto the right path. So direct. I want to look at that word direct. It's sometimes translated train up or guide or steer. Uh, it, it means here, the, the root, word, root word means to discipline and train behavior by instruction and practice. So this word, direct your child, train up your child, it, it's talking about teaching them verbally. It's talking about teaching them by example. It's ta talking about teaching them by how you guide them, what you allow, what you don't allow, boundaries you set. That is directing your child. And the second word, I just want to make sure that we understand this word path. Dire direct your children onto the right path. The path we're talking about is just the, your course of conduct. It's it's a way of living. So this, this verse says, direct your children under the right path. Direct, direct train, uh, uh, show by example uh, the how to live to your child. Okay, so that's what this, this verse is talking about. However, and this is the scary part, the word right is not in the original. So Proverbs is written in Hebrew. The word right is is not in this verse. The, the word should, the way he should go, should is not in this verse. So when you translate from one language to another, you cannot just translate word for word literally. It's, it's just not, it, you say things different ways in different languages. And so it's very normal, very normal to, for translators to just figure out what is the context, um, what does the rest of the Bible say? All that stuff so that they're, they're very careful, very prayerful, and, and, and they're, they're doing their best. But translators, were, they added that word. And in some translations, you'll see that little word in brackets uh, because they're just saying, we just want you to know that wasn't the literal word from the original, but we believe it's the right meaning. But if, if you just simply took it as it says in the original, it, it would be uh, more like saying this. Train a child in his way, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train a child in his way, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The word right's not really in there. In other words, ruts run deep. Ruts run deep. Habits are hard to break. 
patterns last forever unless something comes to interrupt that. So this verse is trying to say, hey, if you get a child going in his way, he's never leaving it. So it's pretty important what you do in, a way, in, the, uh, in establishing the child's way when they're younger. And what is a child's way? According to Proverbs, well, Proverbs 22.15 says, a youngster's heart is filled with foolishness. A youngster's heart is filled with foolishness. And here's the deal. That is absolutely true. Every one of us is born a sinner. We're born into sin. So at day zero, day one, we're born into sin. Foolishness is in our heart. It is a part of us. When we live our own way instead of God's way, that is acting foolishly. That is foolish, but that is how we naturally act. No one has to teach us how to be selfish. All you have to do is hang around with a couple of one-year-olds playing together on a little play date, and each one always wants what the other one has. Mine. Mine, mine, give me that. And they will push each other down to get that thing that they want. No one had to train them in that way. That way was there from the beginning. It's called sin. It's our sin nature. It's selfish and it's destructive. I, I remember when, I, I don't know how old I, I was, but I'm old, I, I was old enough that I can remember it. So I am thinking maybe I was eight, something like that, old enough to know better. And my grandpa, Grandpa Laferney, gave me a dollar bill. Back in that day, you could buy a house for a dollar. <laughs> okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it was worth a lot more than it is today. And he gave me a dollar, and then my grandpa, he was a character, and always teasing, always talking, always laughing, joking. And he said, I want it back, and grabbed it back from me. So I went up, I stomped on his foot. That's my dollar. I'm not proud of that. But I'm just illustrating, there's foolishness bound up in the heart of a child. No one has to train it there. It's already there. Ugh. Our natural way is sinful and selfish. It just is. And so I think you could read, I guess this is a little bit of interpretation here. I think you could read Proverbs 22, 6 in one of our family passions. And it's not miniature golf. It's sarcasm. I feel like this could be sarcastic. Let a child have his way when he's young. And when he's old, he's still going to want his way. What if that is a little bit, a bit of this message that we have missed from this verse? Let a child have his way when he's young, and when he's old, he's still going to continue to insist on having his own way. I want to do it my way. I want what feels good to me, and like that. Oh, my goodness. That makes this verse really important. Uh, Pastor Jonathan Aiken wrote, Proverbs teaches that left to themselves, children will choose the wrong and destructive path. Left to themselves, children will, will choose the wrong and destructive path. So here's the deal. Let's just boil it down. Parents, here's your job. Parents' job is to correct sinful behavior. That is your job it's, it, as, as in raising kids and getting them on the right path, getting them on the path. We want to get, we want to get them off their own path and onto God's path. Your, your job is to correct that sinful behavior. Hey, keep your hands yourself. Don't hit your sister. Like that, no, that is not okay. That's sinful. So your job is to correct uh, their sinful behavior and to point them to God. Here's the deal. God is the only one who can change their sinful nature. So your job is not even to save them. Your job is not to, say, to change their nature. That is God's job. Parents' job, correct sinful behavior. God's job, correct sinful nature. Change nature. Transform lives. That's God's job. A young person has a job too. Their job is to submit to the will of their parents. 
That is their job. And we got to train them until they do. Because naturally, they don't want to submit. Because all of us were a kid once, remember? Exactly. We know. And then their job is to submit to Jesus and follow him. And so as parents, we point them to Jesus. And throughout Proverbs, you got to hear this. The child is held responsible for his own actions when he grows up. So you and I, as adults, I'm speaking to mostly adults in this room. You and I, we don't get to say, I, was, I made that sinful choice because of my parents. We don't get to say that because we are responsible. Our parents did whatever they did. They, uh, they might have parented wisely or not. But ultimately, when, as we grow up, we are responsible. And that's one reason why I say, parents, you're not to blame if your grown children don't choose Jesus. That's on them. But you are responsible to do your job when they're young. That's your responsibility. Now, perhaps you are not following Jesus. You are not reading the Bible when they were young. I'm going to talk a little bit more later in the message. I plan to. But I just want you to know this. It's not too late. You can pray. You can pray your kids into Jesus. That's your job now. If, if it's too late to do the other job, that's okay. There's grace for that. There's mercy for that. Now do your job and pray. You can do that. And that's a very powerful thing to do. And it's a very positive thing to do. Parents in different stages need a parent differently. When, when those kids are little, you got to teach godly principles. Not only by your words, but by your example. When they're kids. You, you, you can't be doing something sinful and saying, don't do this, don't do this, as they watch you doing that. You can't say, it's important for you to go to church, but you just drop them off to church and you go get coffee. <laughs> it's by word and example. By word and example. So you get your coffee on the way to church and bring it with you. That's what you do. That's right. Or you get it here. We got some good coffee in the lobby. So parents, when the kids are little, that's, that's what you got to do. That's the stage. You're just constantly training them by word and deed. But as they get older, you transition from teacher to coach. And in my mind, those are two different things. Teacher is constantly saying, these are the rules. No, you're breaking that rule. Don't stop that. You got to do this. Yes, do this other thing instead. A coach begins to say, you know, I, 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 I'm watching what you're doing there. And it would, I, I, I uh, what, what's your goal? What's your goal? You want to be close to God? Okay, so it seems like when you pray, you're closer to God, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you think you should be doing then? You, it just begins to, it begins to change, and you begin to coach them and, and, and get them ready to go out on their own. And when your kids are grown up, they make their own choices. And that's hard, but they do. And your job is to pray. That the, each stage has a different, a different job. Okay, so second truth about discipline as it relates to parents. Discipline is loving. Discipline is loving. And I love it when I think of a phrase that works in two different ways. This means it is loving to discipline. It also means how do you discipline? Lovingly. Discipline is loving. We're talking about godly, wise discipline. Correction, punishment, Training is all intended to be for the benefit of the child. It is not necessarily to make your life or my life easier. It is for the benefit of the child. That is why we discipline them. Proverbs 13, 24 says, those who spare the rod, and I just looked, I, I, I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but I did look it up. I wanted to know, what does it really say? This is what it says. Those who spare the rod. That's what it says. And the translators inserted of discipline, trying to give us the context, and that's good. So th those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. Just let that sink in in a minute. Oh, I just feel like little Johnny should do whatever he wants. Then you hate your child. That's Bible. Yikes! Those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. Those who love their children care enough to discipline them. And there are different words 
root words in the Bible that are translated discipline, and that's why I'm kind of pointing them out. This, this word here, care enough to discipline, is, it, it means to improve strength of character and self-control. So it's not necessarily talking, it's not equal to punishment. It's training in this, in this verse, training, okay? So those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. Those who love their children care enough to discipline them to train them. And uh, you might have heard the old, old, old saying, spare the rod, spoil the child. This is where it comes from. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's a biblical thing. It, it, it's, it's to say it's not loving to let your child have his own way all the time or to go in his own way. We need to get him off that way because that way is a destructive way. It is a foolish way. Every child would naturally make selfish and destructive decisions. So th this past week, uh, we were with our, uh, our kids and grandkids, and little Kaya is almost two, right? Like, just not, not very long from now. And she uh, was heading down the driveway uh, at, at our son's house, heading down the driveway towards the road. And uh, Nana happened to be walking, that's Shelly, happened to be walking with her at, at the time. And as she's just like, oh, just heading down to the road, <laughs> Nana says, stop. And she did. I'm so impressed by how, how well behaved she is. She stopped. And my point is, it would be destructive for a little bitty child to go into the street. That's what I mean by destructive. I don't mean like, uh, you know, launching atomic bombs. I mean, it's destructive. It's hurtful. It's hurtful. It's dangerous. And that would be their natural, foolish tendency. It's all of our tendency. And so w it, it, it would be harmful. It would have been hateful if Nana didn't care and just let her walk in the street. That's hateful to not set some boundaries and curb those little deers. All right. We, we have another grandkid, Ollie. And his parents are always saying to him, Ollie, be aware of, where's your body? Where's your body? Where's your body? Be aware of your body. Because he's just going through life having a great time, flinging his arms this way and that way, knocking over vases, hitting people in the eye. But it's not intentional. He's just not aware of his body. And that's part of what his parents are just trying to train him in that. And Proverbs 13, 24, this spare the rod and uh, verse it implies two stages of disciplining. Spanking, uh, whether or not you use a rod, and the, the rod in the, in the Bible here, it's a very thin switch or stick. That's, the, uh, I, you can say, I don't agree with that. I'm just reading your Bible, okay? I'm just, I'm reading your Bible. And, and our kids, they, they, not, not a stick, but there was a spoon occasionally. <laughs> it was wooden, so we felt it was a rod. But that really is only effective for maybe when the kids are younger, not too young, not too old, maybe age two to six, just approximately, so kind of in that age, because they're not very good at reasoning it out. You can say to little Kaya, now listen, sweetie, if you ever walk in a road, a, a car may come, you may not see it, but it may, it may be there, it may be quiet, it may come around the corner, she, that's too much. She's not going to get that, and it's not going to change her behavior. And so at sometimes during that age, you've got to say, no, listen, I'm getting your attention. You are not putting your hand on that stove. And so I'm going to give you a little pain on the backside so you remember, keep your hand away. <laughs> and that is Bible. But you don't do that uh, as the kids get older. As they get older, like teenager or whatever, you, there's some other forms of discipline. A, a, a serious talking to maybe enough for a certain child or a loss of privilege, other things, all right? And so this, the, the rod is just saying, listen, you've got to help your kids. You've got to train them, encourage them to be on the right path. Our Heavenly Father set the example for us of loving discipline. And in Hebrews chapter, two, chapter 12, it says, for the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. God disciplines, and punishes, and he only does it to the ones that he considers children that he loves. And one way God shows he loves is by disciplining. Skipping down to partway through verse 10, God's discipline is always, someone say always, God's discipline is always good for us. In other words, that's where I got that principle. Discipline is to benefit 
the child. And God's discipline always benefits us so that we might share in his holiness. No discipline is enjoyable when it's happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. And so in this case, this word translated discipline means imposing harmful, uh, uh, not harmful, maybe it's not, painful, painful consequences to change behavior. This isn't just a nice little training. This is punishment. And God punishes those he loves. And that's how you know he's children, we're children. And uh, I, I don't have time to get into it, but Jesus experienced the love of the Father when he was hung on a cross. He endured that as discipline because he knew that there was something better on the other side, and it was the salvation of the world. Proverbs 23, 14 says, Physical discipline may well save them from death. Let that sink in. A more literal translation in, 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 in the English Standard Version says, If you strike him with the rod, he, you will save his soul from Sheol, from the place of the dead, from death. This is intense, but this is serious. We don't get to just go, well, wh whatever Dr. Spock says, that's what I'm going to do. No, that, that's not how it goes. Wise parenting follows God's plan. Spanking is controversial, and I know probably some of you are irritated. Some of you are like, oh, is, is this true? Some of you are, are like, yes, amen. There's probably a lot of different direct, uh, reactions to this, but I'm just trying my best to bring you the Bible. Uh, and I know it's controversial, but the, uh, Proverbs does uh, tell us that it's good to spank when the, when the situation calls for it. Dr. Spock, Dr. Benjamin Spock, in the 40s, wrote a book, and in it he said, no, you don't need to spank. Just let little Johnny have his way. And at first, that was shocking and weird and unusual. But just like any, any um, concept, as, as people do begin to embrace it, more and more people embrace it, and then all of a sudden, we think that's the way it's always been, and it's just right. It's not the way it's always been. And it doesn't matter what Facebook says or what Dr. Spock says. What does God say? <laughs> like, that's what, that's what we got to come back. Back to, however, spanking is never to be child abuse. Now, those two are not synonymous, but you could spank in a way that is abusive. You could. So, spanking in a fit of rage, child abuse. Spanking that bruises or injures, child abuse. So that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about inflicting a little pain, a sting, that helps them know, don't do that more dangerous thing. So when you spank, you explain to the child, here's what you did. I told you not to poke your sister in the eye with a stick, and you did. That is why I'm about to spank you. The reason I would want to spank you, I, I don't like to spank you, but I want to make sure that this does not lead to something more serious later on. So because I love you and I'm protecting you, I'm going to spank you. Bend over. <laughs> That's not child abuse. That is saving your child from Sheol, from death. That is Bible. Now, if, like I said, you could spank in a way that is abusive, but Proverbs also makes it clear that a lack of discipline is child abuse. You're sending them to death. You're sending them to death down a destructive path. Okay, so technically I don't have time. For the bonus material? If I say it really fast? Okay, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you best I can. And you can take a picture of the slide at the end, and it will have all of, the, all, all of my list here. Number three, discipline is thoughtful. Discipline is thoughtful. Proverbs 14, 15 says, Only simpletons believe everything they're told, i.e., Dr. Spock, Facebook, the latest article. Only simpletons believe everything they're told. The prudent carefully consider their steps. So here's something that I do not usually do, and if you if you have been under my, my preaching for very long, you don't you know I I don't do this. I'm gonna just give you some of my wisdom that I've seen over the years. I'm 61. I've been around the block a few times, 
I've raised kids. I've got grandparents. I've been a pastor. I've been a, a children's pastor, actually. It was my first full-time position. So I've been around. I've seen some stuff. I've observed a lot. And I just want to bring you what I observed. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 7 said, uh, here's a command from the Lord. Da, 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 do this, do this. Then he says, now, I don't have a direct command from the Lord on this, but I think it's a really good idea. That's what this is. I don't have a direct command from the Lord on this, but I, this is what I think is a, a wise, good idea. All right? So here we go. Number one, be consistent. Be consistent. Define your boundaries with the kids and stick to them. I had a boundary, and no one, I, I don't know why, but as a parent, I had this boundary. The kid does not get to hurt my face. I don't care how young they are. The kid doesn't get to hurt my face. That is a boundary I drew. So when it was a little bit, a little bit of baby, just you know, a, a two months old or something, there's, there's no discipline there. But this is what I would do. I would just gently, lovingly, I kept moving that little hand away from my face. You know how they, they have those little scratchy nails? It can leave a mark. That kid was not leaving a mark on me. And so I just am holding, oh, I love you so much. And I pull that hand away. Over and over and over, pull that hand away. Once they were old enough to understand words, I would say, do not scratch me. (laughs) Get your hand off my face. And then maybe the discipline there was a light tap like this. That was their spanking. Mm -hmm. And then pull it away. I am disciplining them because I have drawn a boundary. You're not hurting my face. (laughs) We had had other things like that. Mom is a delicate flower. I drew a boundary. Mom is a delicate flower. You do not crush or bruise her. Am I right? Mom is a delicate flower. And that was a boundary I drew. No, little Johnny does not get to jump on mom's head. No. <laughs> that is not happening. And here's what happens every day in America in the car. The, the, they're, uh, the parent and the kids are in the car, and the, the kid says, I want ice cream. And the parent says, you know, we always get ice cream on Fridays. That's kind of our special treat. This is not Friday, so no ice cream. Then the kid starts negotiating or throwing a fit or saying, uh, I'll, I'll be really good if you give me ice cream. I, I want it, I want it, I want it, I really want it, I really want ice cream, I really want ice cream, I'll have the cheapest one, I want ice cream, I want ice cream. And then the parent goes, okay, just this once, but tomorrow, don't even ask because the answer is going to be no tomorrow. What did the child learn? Ask every day because I can get it to be a yes because there are no boundaries. So here, here's my advice. It's still under the same, under the same uh, heading, be consistent. If you say stop, make that child stop. If you don't mean stop, don't say stop. If you don't really mean it, don't say stop. If you do mean it, you, you say it until, or, and you uh, correct their behavior until they stop. You don't just go stop, stop, stop. Oh, well, I'm tired of saying it, and then move on and let them keep doing it. That is not being consistent. Um, if you do care, make them stop. Okay, here's the next one. State the positive. Just state it positively. I'm not saying be all fluffy and never correct. I'm just saying when you bring your correction, say what, get in their minds what you want them to do, not what you want them to not do. Does that make sense? So I, I would say, instead of saying, don't touch the stove, don't touch the stove, don't touch the stove, all they're thinking about is touching the stove. <laughs> instead, I would say, keep your hands away, keep your hands away. Keep your hands away. Do you see how I'm stating the positive? It is a correction, but state the positive. And um, my observation is it just gets the right thing in in their mind. Stay in the yard. Stay in the yard rather than don't run out in the street. Stay in the yard. You see what I'm saying? That's just, it's, 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 it's me. It's, I got the mic right now, so I get to say what I want. Okay. The next one is match the punishment to the crime. Match the punishment to the crime. There is a very big difference between rebellion and childish carelessness. And it's so funny because this happened last night. <laughs> I made a decision when, we, when our kids were little, if they spilled the milk at the table out of carelessness, there would be zero correction. Because they're just being a kid. They're just, they're just not thinking. And I know kids spill milk. Now, you got to know, for me, this is big because I really take care of my stuff. I don't like milk spilled in my stuff. I don't like it going in the cracks between the leaves on the table. I don't like it under the legs. I don't like it. However, if a kid is just being a kid, they're reaching for their fork, and they knock the milk over, zero correction from me. It happened last night and uh, with, with Camilla. 
She, she, she just accident. I was watching her. She just accidentally knocked over the milk. It had a lid on it, but a little bit of it spilled out. No correction. We're just going to clean it up. Now, if I say, hey, quit squirreling around at the table and keep your hands to yourself. We're going to spill out milk, and I don't want that milk spilled. And then you do it? That's a different story. Because I, I warned you and told you there's going to be a punishment if you spill it after I told you not to. And, and again, I'm, I'm not talking about being careless. I'm talking about like they go to hit their sister and knock over the milk. There's a punishment. Do you see the difference? Yeah, so make the punishment appropriate to the crime. If it's not a crime, don't punish it. Um, so like if the kid says no and they're 10, okay, no, you don't get your bicycle for a month. Mm. That punishment does not fit that crime. That's too much. Dial it down, parents. Dial it down. A couple of, uh, of suggestions here. Never make not going, never, never withdraw going to church as a punishment. I've seen that, you guys. It just makes me want to cry. Church, withdrawing church, that is not a punishment. No. Because it's, it's sending the wrong message. Um, and don't make food a reward. Don't make food a reward. Because that, that can lead in some dangerous uh, ways. Okay, M make it age appropriate. That's the next, next heading. Make it age appropriate. Similar to what I've, uh, I've already said, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Uh, f follow through or keep your word. Keep your word. I have heard so many parents make idle threats. I've been in a restaurant before. And I've heard a parent say to their kids who are acting up in the restaurant, if you don't stop that, I'm never... <laughs> don't make an idol that says something like, if you don't stop this, then for the rest of your life, this other thing... That you just you can't enforce that. Just don't. a couple of things I did uh, that were very helpful to me because I found myself when the, I found myself yelling in anger, and I at some point I just said, "Okay, Garen." I said to myself, "Garen, you got to stop this. That's not the kind of parents I want to be." And so I made a plan, and this is what I would encourage you to do so that you can keep your word. I trained myself to say when I got mad, and you will get mad as a parent because kids are, whoo, they push all the limits. I trained myself to say, if you don't stop that, I'm going to punish you. Do you see how that's different then? If you don't stop that, I'm taking away your bike and sending it to another country. <laughs> <laughs> so I, what I did is by training myself what to say when I'm angry, then I don't say something that I'm going to regret or can't back up. If you say no more lunches for the rest of your life, if you don't stop that, then you need to do that. <laughs> or, the, or the kid's not going to believe anything you say. So just don't say it. Don't say that. And here's another thing I would say when I got angry. You have a timeout while I figure out your punishment. And that, is, that was so helpful to me because, again, I'm not committing myself to anything because sometimes when I cool down, I realize, or sometimes I realize because my wife told me, <laughs> I saw that and you didn't and it wasn't what you thought. So by saying, you have a timeout while I figure out your punishment gives me time to cool down and then I can come back to them and say, I got more information. Daddy was wrong. I apologize. Please forgive me. So that leads right into the next one. Discipline in love and on purpose, not in anger and impulsiveness. So the discipline is to benefit the child, not to make your life more convenient. It's to benefit the child, so build the right things into them. Teach a young child to not hit or bite others. Please. And if you can do it before they get to nursery, even better. <laughs> Definitely before they get to pre-K. And here's the thing that I can see that as a young parent you may not be able to see. You teach a young kid to not hit or bite others so that when they're in grade school, they don't bully others. So that when they're in high school, they don't join a gang and shoot others. 
it's one long trajectory. It's one long line of not valuing the life of another person. So you teach them that young. Oh, no, no, no. We value my face. We value your sister's face. We value other people. So discipline in love with the long game in, in view. And then this one is not really from, from my own life. Um, well, no, I, I got I, I to gotta do, do two more. Super fast. Take time to cool down and think it through. Take time to cool down and think it through. Get the facts first. And I can tell you there were many, many times I was simply wrong. I, I've seen it uh, recently in, in families where, man, the one kid, the parents just do not let that one kid get away with anything. And, and the kid just hardly did anything. The parent goes, you, blah, blah, blah. And really, the, what they didn't see is that little brother just did it to him first. And so it just helps so much just to take time, cool down. We tend to overreact towards our firstborn same-gender child. So poor Steve-O probably had it for me. And uh, your same-gender oldest child, that's typically who you butt heads with because they have invaded your space. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah. So uh, the, the goal is to, to correct simple behavior, point them to Jesus. So that's what you got to do. And... The last one from my life, always reaffirm your love after discipline or punishment. Always reaffirm your love. How many times, Steve-O, did I say to you, I still love you? Yeah, thank you for saying that. Yes, I did. I still love you. I still love you. I did this because I love you, and I'm not going to let you grow up and be a bully. I love you, and always a hug I love you. So the last thing they remember, parent loves them. This is the one that's not from my own life. I've just seen it in my kid's life. If you have a new baby, read up on sleep training and do it. <laughs> it hadn't been invented when we were kids, when our kids were young. So I just highly recommend that. Get those kids on the right sleep schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Would you stand to your feet? You guys have been so patient, and I hope this has been helpful. Let's leave that on the screen for just a second so they can take a photo if they want. You can go back and listen to it, of course. Whoo, my goodness, I brought the whole load <laughs> today. And the funny thing is, this is only one slice of discipline from, uh, of parenting, rather, from, from Proverbs. It's so, it's so good, so much there. Would you bow your heads with me and let's pray. I want to pray for you. Lord, I just pray you would help us to be, a, be fathers and mothers, be grandparents like you, our Heavenly Father. Help us to discipline in love. Help us to discipline lovingly. Help us to discipline for the benefit of the children that you have put in our lives, nieces or nephews, kids in class, uh, kids in the neighborhood. Lord, help us to just be used by you for the benefit of the kids you've given us uh, interaction with. Lord, help us to apply your wisdom from Proverbs in our lives so that we can do it wisely, Lord. Lord, I, I just want to ask you to forgive us when we got it wrong. I, I can think of some, some times when I just lit into my kids and I got it wrong. And I pray for the parent who feels like they got it wrong. Or that they're getting it wrong right now. And Lord, I just pray you'd help them. Help them to apply the principles from your word. And help them to get it right going forward. Lord, I pray for the empty nester parents who feel like they're, they're watching their kids and it seems like they're not walking and following you, Jesus. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you just break guilt off of their shoulders. Break it off, Lord, because it's not from you. Condemnation is not from you, God. And Lord, we did our best. I just pray, Lord God, that you just help us from this, help us draw a line in the sand and from this point forward, help us to not beat ourselves up. Help us just to pray. Help us to speak a word when we can, when you give us an opportunity, and help us to pray. And Lord, I pray for every parent that has kids that are not following Jesus. I just pray, Lord, that you would help those kids to find you and put their faith in you, Lord God. Help them to bend their knee, and may their, may their parents see it in this lifetime. 
Lord, I pray that every kid, grown up or not, put their faith in Jesus. With your head still bowed, I just want to give you an opportunity to put your faith in Jesus yourself. I don't know if you've already done it or not. I, I, I don't know if you've walked away from the Lord and you need to come back or if you have never put your faith in Jesus, but here's what you do. Turn away from your sin. Turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead you. If you want to become a Christian today, if you want to put your faith in Jesus, would you just raise your hand so I know who to pray for specifically? If it's you, if, it's, if you're online, I won't be able to see you raise your hand, but I encourage you to raise your hand to God anyway. Yeah, people are making some decisions right now, and I'm so grateful for that. I'd love to just coach you in a prayer. There's that coaching thing. Would you just repeat after me, but pray it to God. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I'm sinful. I'm selfish. Please forgive me of my sins and make me new. I choose to follow you starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you just, you just prayed that prayer to, to put your faith in Jesus, the answer is yes. You are a Christian. You, are, you belong to the family and the kingdom of God. And I want to encourage you to take the course following Jesus. And Pastor Christian will tell a little bit more about that. Thank you, Pastor Garrett. Thank you for just so clearly just showing us what God words, God's Word says about parenting, but also giving us your wisdom, which we, we receive so well. So thank you so much. Well, um, at this time, if you filled out that Connect card, please drop it in the box in the back. But before you leave, um, if, you, if um, baptism class is happening right now um, in, in the youth room out there, so if you are a Christian and you have not yet been baptized, you got to go to the class. Like, that's your next step. Like, Jesus had, Jesus, or um, this guy came to Jesus in the, in the Bible. Like, he just be, became a Christian, and he turns to the guy who, who led him to Christ, and he, says, and he sees a puddle on the road, and he says, well, I just became a Christian. Shouldn't I be baptized? There's a, some dirty water there. Is this good enough? And the guy says, sure, let's do it. That's what we're doing here, okay? <laughs> so if you're a Christian, have not been baptized, go to the class. Okay, and then um, come for next week. And then also, we're setting up for Ladies Bunko Night tonight. So if you are not going to baptism class, and if you could help, we could use like five or six guys or gals to help move chairs and set up for tonight. All right, God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye. And t talk to Scott for, um, for setting up for Bunko Night. <laughs>